Jamaicans <clears throat> to know that we stand on the foundation built by the sacrifices of our elders. They deprived themselves so their children could get a good education. They are the pillars of our churches. The elders have been our parents, guardians, teachers, pastors, household workers, nurses, doctors, supervisors, managers. We owe them a debt that we will never ever able to repay fully. But they will tell us that if we use their good example, work harder, be honest and kind, that will be enough for them. We know we will never be able to honor all our nation builders individually, but we hope that by shining a light on those that we can, it will encourage you to give honor to those in your families and communities. It is said that laughter is the closest thing to the grace of God. And who can be more gracious than our living legacy honoree, Oliver Samuels? We congratulate him heartily. So, my friends, be an Oliver in the lives of your elders. Share those lighthearted moments and grace them with positive conversations so that even if you have to be physically distant, you are close in spirit. To our guests here and online, please enjoy this afternoon's Living Legacy Award ceremony. I wish you all, in the words of our CCRP motto, life to the fullest. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Laurie Chen. Uh, Mass Oliver, I'm going to ask you to step forward, please, and take your place of honour right there, as I invite Mrs. Reedwall, Patricia Reedwall, to read the citation. Mrs. Reedwall. Oliver Samuel's CD is our beloved Jamaican icon of comedy, actor, writer, and philanthropist. Oliver Adolphus Samuels is often described as Jamaica's king of comedy. He is a much-loved actor who not only makes people laugh, but also personifies the Jamaican spirit of resilience, generosity, and warm-heartedness at home and abroad. This year, he celebrates his 50th anniversary in Jamaican theater. Born in Harmony Hall, St. Mary, Mr. Samuels grew up on a banana plantation where his father worked as a casual laborer. His mother, a vendor, was a great influence in his life, instilling values of honesty and hard work in her son. Like many country children in poor circumstances, Mr. Samuels would get up early to fetch water from the river before walking several miles to school. Despite the hardships, at age seven, his interest in acting was sparked when he would join neighboring children to ga who gathered on Friday evenings to sing, recite poetry, and tell stories. After attending St. Mary High School and Dintill Technical High School, he worked at the Orange River Agricultural Station before venturing to Kinston, where he worked at several clerical jobs. Mr. Samuels then decided to pursue his ambition to be an actor. He trained at the Jamaica School of Drama from 1971 to 1973, doing odd jobs to keep to earn his keep. 
His first theatre appearance was a voice off stage in Lorraine Hansberry's Reason in the Sun. Although his early performances met with mixed reviews, Mr. Samuels persisted. He had aspirations to play serious dramatic roles, but his affinity with comedy quickly took over. I did not choose comedy, he says. Comedy chose me. While studying drama, a nervous young Mr. Samuels attended an audition at the Little Theatre. This is where his theatre career began. Mr. Samuels' highly successful 1971-72 national pantomime debut put him on the map when he played Moondrop in Music Boy, headlined by Louise Bennett and Rani Williams. He went on to perform in 13 national pantomimes. The medium of television was enormously successful for Mr. Samuels. In Jamaica, his comedy series on JBC during the 1980s and the 1990s, Oliver, Oliver at Large, and Large and in Charge brought him thousands of new fans at home and overseas. They laughed uproariously at his alter ego, Olivius Adams's antics. Basically, he played himself. He has also appeared in more than 20 other overseas productions, including several with the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC. Mr. Samuels occupies a unique position in a household, as a household name representing Jamaican theatre and specifically Jamaican humour overseas. He quickly established a warm rapport with audiences across the Caribbean and was adopted by the Jamaican diaspora in the United States and the UK where he has toured regularly to highly receptive audiences. He has acted in a number of films, including the 1976 adaptation of Trevor Roan's Smile Orange and the cult classic Countryman in 1982. He has also appeared in Canadian, Italian and German films. Jamaican Patois is a critical part of Mr. Samuels' persona and performance. He did not speak one word of Patwa in the 1981 production of Moliere's comedy, School for Wives, at the Little Theatre, but this was most unusual. He describes cultural icon, Honorable Louise Bennett Coverley, Miss Lou, as his mentor. After a perform pant pantomime performance early in his career, he recalls Miss Lou asking him, Look a boy, where you come from? He was so thrilled when his idol told him that his recital of her poem, Love Letter, was the best interpretation she had ever heard. Mr. Samuels has received numerous awards and honors in Jamaica, the United States, and the United Kingdom. These include Jambi's Award of, for Excellence in Theatre Arts in 1998, several Actor Boy Awards, including a 2007 Life Achievement Award, and the Marcus Garvey Lifetime Achievement Award in the 25th Caribbean American Heritage Awards Gala in November 2018 in Washington, D.C. for his outstanding body of work and for bringing Brand Jamaica to the performing arts locally and internationally. He was the first recipient of the Gold Medal of the City of Kingston for Arts presented by then Mayor Desmond McKenzie in 2005. He received national honors in 2008 with the Order of Distinction in the rank of Officer, OD. 
This was upgraded to the rank of Commander Class CD in August 2020. Mr. Samuels' innate generosity and empathy with ordinary Jamaicans is a quality that has remained with him throughout his career. On his 35th anniversary in 2005, he donated the proceeds of two concerts under the patronage of Prime Minister P.J. Patterson and Tourism Minister Alun Asamba to several local charities, including Jamaican Aid Support, a cause that is dear to his heart. He has been a mentor for many young people, his own children, as well as many others he has taken under his wing. He regards his children as his greatest blessing in life. Oliver Samuels says, the spirit of Miss Lou still lives with him and inspires him. For Jamaicans everywhere, he epitomizes that spirit while mixing in his own special brand of humor. Laughter is the greatest medicine, he believes. We take a great pleasure in presenting this CCRP Living Legacy Award to Mr. Oliver Samuels, CD, in recognition of his brilliance in theater, his spirit of altruism, and his representation of the best of his beloved Jamaica. I now invite CCRP Board of Directors, Jean Laurie Chin, Mr. Michael Fraser, and Mr. Saturaman Kumaraswamy to present the award and citation to Mr. Oliver Samuels. Sponsors Gallagher Insurance Brokers and JNGI will now present gifts to Mr. Samuels. Let me introduce Mrs. Sandra Bailey, Chief Operations Officer of Gallagher Caribbean Group, and I invite to be on standby Mr. Chris Hind, General Manager JNGI Insurance Company. Oh, Sandra, you're here. Okay, yes, please. Good afternoon, everyone. The Gallagher family is indeed very pleased to partner with CCRP in honoring Mr. Oliver Samuels, who has brought us 50 years of laughter and sometimes life skills to audiences here in Jamaica and overseas. I would also like to say that I am one of your loyal fans and the company, the board, the staff, management, we all salute you and congratulate you on this, your achievement today, the Living Legacy Award. You're truly deserving. So I will just walk over and make my presentation to you, Oliver, and just to say that you're not only large, but you're also very deserving. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Hyde. <laughs> Mrs. Jean Lowry Chin, CEO of CCRP, 
Honorary Mr. Oliver Samuels, members of the CCRP Board of Directors, my industry colleague, Sandra Bailey, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. 30 years ago, when I made Jamaica my home, Oliver Samuels was large and in charge. Not only in Jamaica, but also across the Caribbean and indeed in our worldwide diaspora. Back then, he had earned the title King of Theatre, and more than three de decades later, Oliver is still large and in charge. It is said that laughter is good medicine. Heaven knows we need it now. Well, there is no doubt throughout his career, Oliver has lightened our spirits, boosted our immune systems, and enhanced our psychological health. One only needs to say the name Oliver Samuels, and immediately one is ready to laugh. What is remarkable is Oliver's consistency and how prolific he is. For the past four decades, Oliver Samuels has been commanding respect for his theatrical performances, making an immense contribution to Jamaican theatre. But Oliver's impact has not been confined to the stage because he has also dominated the small screen. Who could forget those side-splitting episodes of Oliver at Large? And for me personally, Oliver at Large was a delightful introduction to Jamaican hum humour, vitality and culture, and it helped me to settle and feel truly at home in my new homeland. Subsequent comedies such as Large Abroad, Class of 73, and the uproarious pantomime saw Oliver conquer a second kingdom, adding the title of Jamaica's King of Comedy to the aforementioned King of Theatre. Oliver, everyone in life was born to accomplish something, and you have achieved greatness. You have earned our respect and admiration, and you have won our hearts. We applaud you for your sterling contribution to popular entertainment, theatre and Jamaican culture. Today we honour and salute you on behalf of the CCRP and JN General Insurance. I'm pleased to present to you with this small token of our appreciation. Congratulations on your achievements and we look forward to so much more. Thank you, Mr. Hein, JNGI. Ambassador Luna Samba, CCRP board member, and she's going to make a special gift to Oliver. Five tablets, huh? To a charity of his own. Yeah. Thank you very much, Joan. Good afternoon, everybody. Oliver. You know, Oliver is a member of COK Sodality Credit Union. And when my staff heard that he was going to be honored this way, and knowing him as well as they do, and his love for children, and especially now when we are trying to see how we can help children in this time of COVID, we thought that we would give Oliver a gift for him to pass on to five students or charities of his choice. And so it pleases me very much to be able to hand this to Oliver on behalf of CCRP and COK Sodality Cooperative Credit Union. Oliver is our very good member and we are pleased to be able to do this. And I just to tell you, when you hear about Oliver being large abroad, I was just reminding him earlier that last year this time, he was, he was playing in London at the Hackney Theatre and I was there. So Oliver, I look forward to seeing so much more of you. And congratulations. Thank you ever so much, Ambassador Luna Samba. Uh, 
We will now have a rendition of Jamaican folk songs by Christine McDonald Nevers, accompanied by Mr. Stephen Shonar. These, come, sorry, you can go sit down. Who tell us if we want to sit down? Yes, you can go and sit down right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. These songs were composed by Peter Ashburn based on the famous Jamaican folk songs. Ladies and gentlemen, Christine McDonald Nevers and Stephen Shonar.
think you were sitting over there on that chair. Which one? Invited to a chair of high honor. Yeah. I think you were stopped. Where are you? Elevated, but you're so nice. Oliver. You're not going to have this now. Yeah, I think so. Oui. We don't want to muzzle you. We wouldn't want Freedom. to try. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver, we are so very honored to have you. And this afternoon, we want to talk a little bit about your 50-year journey, your comedic brilliance. We want to first thank you and congratulate you for yeah. your order of distinction, Commander Class. Mm. Mm. And of course, I'd like to sneak in your belated birthday. We both share the same birthday. Yes, so clearly not the same so year. That's so right, uh, But yes, <laughs> November four. Okay, so but Oliver, how yeah. do you feel about being an honoree this year, 2020, special year, or Living Legacy Awardee? How do you feel? Let me tell you something. When Jean called me mm -hmm. and tell me, say. Then I can't see that figure me. My God, the woman man is man. <laughs> and I fix Jean. So till Jean after them say, yes, me I get it. And it is very special this year because Ongo me wanna get it this year, you know? Yes. So it is so sweet and I thank CCRP for considering me for this illustrious award. And so deserving as well. Thank you. But what would you say inspired your love for theatre? I would imagine it is out of the community from which I was raised. And also, them, um, <laughs> one time I do something good for my mother. Me think I must have cleaned the floor and thing, and she was so excited. She said she didn't have nothing to give me and my brother, but she was saying, we're going to move it. Mm -hmm. So I go to the movie, my dear, ma, and rain a fall, rain a fall in the flame. <laughs> and me, it sounds as though it was the rain <laughs> dropping on the zinc roof of the, of the theater. So uh -huh. when the show done now, and me come out, and out they dry, 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 because I said, where we are going mud, you know? Mm -hmm. When the place dry, me sit and I said, Lord, it's funny, don't you? Look how rain in a fall in a movie, and out there dry, dry, dry. <laughs> and he said to me, say, I flim you idiot, you know? <laughs> and that thing, it just, I don't know, it created in me immediately yeah. this spirit of wanting to be a part of that magic. Yes. And that, that is it. That was it. Mm -hmm. So who were your mentors then who guided you along the way? Look here. The first mentor was Mr. Hunt. Mr. Hunt was a younger man. It seemed on the plantation that I was born on mm -hmm. that could I read. Mm -hmm. It just seemed that way because him always have the paper, no matter how old it is. Mm -hmm. He might read the paper and he might tell me what I want out of inner life mm -hmm. and all that. And he had the first rediffusion on, oh. the, on the estate. So he was like the village lawyer. Mm -hmm. And then hearing Miss Lou, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, talk. The Jamaica talk. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, that woman, the boss is her. And I want to boss like she. Yeah. And so she was really, she had a tremendous impact on, on my, my, my life. Yes, amazing. Oh, what are some of the highlights of your career in theater? <laughs> I know there are I, many, but the, you know. <laughs> but one of them really is the, the first time on, in, on the ward stage mm -hmm. with. Miss Lou. Ah. It was just because the year before, you know, um, three, three boys, me and my two friends, them, we go Carib. And when we get, remember, Carib had this, this expanding gate, iron mm -hmm. gate. Mm -hmm. And when we got there, the next thing me realized, me under the clock, one crowd push, mm -hmm. and we end up at the clock. And I just said to them, said, "Come and go down and watch, go watch, go watch Miss Louia." Yeah? Mm -hmm. And we went. And when I looked at that woman when she came out, and she just come out and the smile, the beautiful smile, and Lord, the audience is a galang so over her. Mm -hmm. I said to my friends, "Next year, me the panda stage with her." And it happened. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Share some of the experiences, because we know you're large here and in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. how, how do you feel, for example, um, those, those, those uh, performances in, in England, where people haven't been here for a while and they hear the real power coming <laughs> from you, from Yad? Ambassador, Ambassador, I probably could have described it better than me, but <laughs> let me tell you, 
John, it is, it is something else. Mm -hmm. when, when I enter the stage, every time I enter the stage, mm -hmm. and the big uh, thunderous applause, mm -hmm. and you know, me say, oh God, look at that. I mm -hmm. feel them, you know, man. Yes. I feel them. There's this white man who comes to the, the in England, he comes to the, 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 the shows every year. Mm -hmm. He says, I don't come to look at you. I come to watch it audience because I don't know one thing you're saying <laughs> you know? and um, it, it's just incredible we there was a time when we just started out and um, you know them have some promoter we are trying at him mm. and so we me sleep in a some, some hotel with so much cockroach you know in my lifetime you know <laughs> because sometimes yeah, the producer them they don't got the money to pay and you can't find them it's a good thing so you didn't have the ticket to come back for <laughs> you can't find them yes so so those were those were fun days because mm -hmm. I, I I know that there were going to be better days mm -hmm. and you know to be to be recognized because basically mm -hmm. the work that I have been doing I I have never put this great importance to it. I, I thank all the institutions who have recognized my work as being important and, and, and the government and all that, you know, people in the Caribbean and, and abroad. Mm -hmm. Because really and truly, all me wanted was to make people laugh, you know. Oh. That was really what, I, I tell you something, me never know say money was into it. No, because when we started, <laughs> I must say two dollar, two dollar <laughs> performance, <laughs> and me say, me and like people like Valier had to walk to go call it illegal money, you know, because there was a particular producer who, if you do ten show and you forget the, let's say the twenty dollar whatever. You have to go to my yard. <laughs> and when you go to my yard, you know, did it? And the mother said, no, no, we ain't there. And the sister, she was the accountant. She said, she don't get no money yet. And it was, it was quite <laughs> incredible, you know? Yes. Yes. Sound like a pantomime in itself. <laughs> yeah, but how do you balance your family life with all this traveling? How, how um, do you do it? I have, uh, well, I, I had, I had, children who were quite understandable and mm -hmm. uh, understanding mm -hmm. and um you know what i believe john tell children the truth mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. tell them the truth and try to reason with them so me you know I, I'm, I've, I've been a single parent for quite a while mm -hmm. and i had these kids and wherever i am going i would let them know Mm -hmm. I said, if you this is the number you can get me at or whatever, call and thing. And we always, one boy, one of the boys never usually go to sleep early. Mm -hmm. But he never, he never tell me no lie. He always said, daddy, me you know what you sure. <laughs> me couldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and they have come out to be quite mm -hmm. interesting adults. Absolutely. And uh, we know you have some biological children, but you fathered many. Yes. Tell us about that. Um, you see, where I am from, mm -hmm. I am very familiar with sufferation, you know? Mm -hmm. and, um, and if you come anywhere near me and tell me, say you're hungry, I mm -hmm. have to find something to give you, because I know what hunger is. Mm -hmm. And I have always said, if there's anything that I can do to help anyone, mm -hmm. me not have to know them, right? I will because I would not want them to experience some of the hunger mm -hmm. that I have been through, I have gone through. And so, maybe just say one like a picnic and say beg, 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 beg them, beg oh. parents, we just take them up and beg them. And, mm -hmm. and take care of them. If I don't take them, I will mm -hmm. contribute to their existence and I'm just so mistake. Yeah. Do you have any of them trying to follow in your footsteps? You know, one of the one of my sons wanted to, but him lazy in the discipline, so <laughs> him nobody. I'm not like we don't even care about the rears that you So he gave it up. He gave it up. Mm -hmm. uh, you are so very well loved. Thank when you. When you encounter your fans on a daily basis mm -hmm. and you know, how do you respond to the, this adulation that they have for you? You know, sometimes some of us we're so familiar, Oliver, as though mm -hmm. we know you a long time. <laughs> <laughs> today. Eh? Just today. Mm -hmm. Missy one man. 
I'm here drive. Alibi, alibi. I tap the car, I said, and I said, come here. <laughs> I said, look here, don't do that. I, do, I don't like it. Yeah. I mean, oh, you're nothing. <laughs> yeah, hear him now. I mean, when you come back here to back the water to me. <laughs> <laughs> it means nothing to him. But, but uh, uh, there was a time when this, this love I couldn't understand. Mm -hmm. And so it was becoming a bit overwhelming. Mm -hmm. and, and I was talking to somebody in the theater. And, and she just said to me, look here. He called me the territory. Yes. And ever since, and once again, I had a discussion with Miss Lou. And I asked her how she coped mm -hmm. with all of it. When she come out of the world, come out and the car come, you see the whole leap of people around her. One want to bag, one take off all her shawl. And, mm -hmm. all, and it used to hurt me, you see, man. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm about to do one for And I asked her, I said, Miss Lou, how oh, you keep smiling with all of that? Mm -hmm. And she said, Miss son, Sometimes you have to take kinti to keep a heart born. Mm -hmm. And I just learned from that. Mm -hmm. I, and I say, whatever happens, me must always smile. Yes. And I, you know, I, <laughs> some people say, oh, me so, um, oh, people just come to me like that. But mm -hmm. I, I don't know. And I, I hope that I have never, ever hurt anyone by them showing me love and I take it to mean them about me, mm -hmm. you know? But um, it has been a wonderful journey and I love Jamaica, I love Jamaicans, I love Jamaicans all over the world mm -hmm. and I'm glad for the opportunity of entertaining them. Yeah, not just an entertainer, but you, you could be a father figure for which a lot of, a lot of people, not, not just men, um, but women, young people, oh, yeah. that didn't I, have. Yes. But what advice would you give to Jamaican fathers, you think? Take up your responsibility. Mm -hmm. It is not manly or fatherly mm -hmm. to go out there and to have all these children mm -hmm. and boys so, sure, at 15, pick them up, you know, and in them, they have no five of them name, mm -hmm. right? And then mm -hmm. leave them to, to, to suffer because the, the, the figure itself is important in the, the child's development. Mm -hmm. And also, it, it, it gives them this, this sense that they have somebody who they can rely on. So they must take them responsibility. If you have a father, you must love your picnic, mm -hmm. love your picnic, chide your child, mm -hmm. you know, discipline your picnic, and, and just make them know that they're special. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else about you that we don't, tell us something about you that we don't know about Oliver. I'm afraid of worm. <laughs> You afraid of worm? Well, yeah, gungo like gungo peas, worm. Anything that crawls, I mean, okay. I like nothing with pop. Okay. You mean a like pop balloon, me afraid of balloon. And clappers and, 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 yeah, and, and yeah, all yeah. them things at mm. Christmas time. So you afraid of that all the time? dog. What? <laughs> Christmas. Christmas time, I'm here, I'm not going to Yeah, what motivates you on a daily basis when you feel low and you don't even have, you don't even have a joke for yourself? Yeah, what well. motivates you? I mean, I am always motivated, you know, Joan, yeah. even, even in my downtime. Yes. Yes. I, I, I see myself as a blessed individual. Yeah. You know, and God has been really been good to me. And You'd say you're a Christian man. You're a real Jamaican me, me Christian believe man. It, me, believe, me believe that there is a superpower. Yes. Yeah, but me not one of them where I'd have walk with a drum and tambourine or... <laughs> Clap and or whatever, but I, I do believe that there's a su superior being that mm -hmm. takes care of us. Yes, wonderful, mm -hmm. and he has guided you, you think? Oh, yeah. You know that for sure, don't you? Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. and with that, once again, Oliver, we want to give you our warmest congratulations on your CCRP Living Legacy Award for 2020, our sole honoree this year. And we want to thank the audience here at PBCJ yes. in the audience and on Facebook and our listeners as well. And in the words of our CCRP motto, live life. and enjoy life to the fullest. I will, I will, and there is a lot more to come. Wonderful. From me. Ladies and gentlemen, Oliver Samuels. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, it was good for us to be here. It is my lot to give the vote of thanks. First of all, I want to share our gratitude to CCRP's living legacy honoree, Oliver Samuels, CD, for sharing his brilliant 50-year journey in theater with us. And we had a private demonstration of just what Oliver is about today. Thank you. Thank you to Joan McDonald for guiding us through this program. And our sponsors, Mr. Chris Hurd from JNGI. Hind, oh my. <laughs> Please, Chris, I am sorry. Mr. Chris Hind from JNGI and Mrs. Sandra Bailey, Gallagher Insurance Brokers and the Procom family. Let me speak to Hubie Chin yes. specifically and to all the other Procom representatives, and Jean, looking at me like I'm not going to call her name. <laughs> and Jean, <laughs> Mrs. Vilma McDonald, who is not here, but she's the chair of the CCRP Living Legacy Awards Committee. And to the participants in the ceremony, CCRP Executive Chair, Jean Laurie Chin, and other CCRP board members, Mr. Michael Fraser, Mrs. Patricia Reed Waugh, and Mr. Kumar, I'm not going to try and call his name, which is terrible <laughs> given the kind of name I have myself, but that is how it is. To the organizing committee, Mrs. Jean Laurie Chin, Mrs. Yvonne Piper, Miss Sandra Laurie, Miss Debbie Cargill, Mr. Errol Howlett, and Miss Anita Chin. To Miss, Mrs. Emma Lewis, who did the citation, and Emma is not here. To Miss Nicolette McFarlane, who did the graphics for this lovely program. Our thanks to the Public Broadcasting Corporation of Jamaica, PBCJ, for this live broadcast on their TV channel and Facebook page. Special thanks to Jamelia Jackson. To inter our interpreter, and I don't think it's Antoinette today, Dorette. Dorette. <laughs> Our singer, Christine McDonald Nevers. What a fabulous performance that was. And I hope you all caught the words to the song, the COVID song. <laughs> and I couldn't help but sing along when she was singing, For Me Love Have Lion Heart. And to our keyboardist, Stephen Shaw Nar, thank you so much. Decor. Miss Valerie Magnus and her team, Z Crew, for arranging the location today. And the sound, Play Media, Andre Gauntlet and his team. Thank you all very much to all of our technical people. Let me not forget <laughs> the gentlemen behind the cameras and those who are doing the lights and everything. It has been a wonderful afternoon. And I thank you all very much. Look out for us next year. Yay. Thank you. Christine is, Christine is going to entertain us again, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. 